Most people, especially women, will deal with some kind of hormonal issue at least some point in their life. And maybe it's cravings that feel out of control or it could be mood swings, it could be bad sleep, it could be stubborn weight. Like no matter what you do, you just struggle to lose that weight, low energy or feeling like your body is just constantly fighting against you. Or maybe it's even all of those things. But the biggest hormone disruptor that most people are doing every single day without even thinking about it, and it's not a food, it's not a macronutrient, it is not a supplement. And strangely, almost nobody talks about it. But once you understand this, you'll realize why some of the things that you've tried in the past haven't worked the way that you hoped they would, and what you actually need to start doing or focusing on if you want your hormones to feel more balanced and predictable, and especially if you're someone who also wants to lose weight. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bonnie, I am the Renegade Dietitian, and I'm here to explain what's actually going on in a way that makes sense. Because I don't just follow nutrition trends blindly, I do follow the science where I can, but I dig deeper into the research so that you can actually understand your body and on a level that most people don't talk about. And I view it through a skeptical lens too, which I think is so important in nutrition and health and not just blindly believing and following even the guidelines. Okay, so if you don't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bells on. I share a new video each week. So if you don't wanna miss that, then do that now. All right, let's get into the video. So firstly, let's just clarify what I mean by hormones, right? You can think of hormones as messages that your body sends to itself, really. They tell you things like when to wake up, when to feel tired, when to feel hungry, how to use the food that you just ate, when to ovulate, how much energy to burn, all of these kind of things. Now, they're not necessarily good or bad. They're basically just instructions. But these instructions are supposed to follow a daily rhythm. When your day becomes chaotic with random sleep times or random eating times, random light exposure, especially later in the day, your body gets the messages at the wrong times. And that is when everything feels off, or at least over time it will start to. You might feel wired at night or exhausted in the morning or hungry at weird times, or like your period or PMS is getting louder and louder. So the question isn't always, you know, are my hormones broken? Very often, it's, are my hormones getting completely mixed signals because of what I'm doing with my day, because of my habits? Okay, so here's the thing that quietly wrecks hormone balance, and that is living out of rhythm with your body clock. And this goes so much deeper than you'd expect, so please hear me out here. And, and I don't mean in a perfectionist, you know, I must eat at 7.02 a.m. kind of a way. I am talking about chronic chaos. Going to bed at 10 p.m. one night and then 1 a.m. the next night or skipping food all day and then eating most of your food or calories late at night or in the evening. Living on caffeine instead of real a real first meal. And even things like bright screens that right up until you go to sleep or having no consistent pattern for wake and eat and light and rest times, okay? Your body, it runs on a 24 hour internal clock called the circadian rhythm. And unfortunately, you know, modern life does constantly pull you out of that rhythm, depending on what it is that you do. But we've got strong evidence that when your sleep, light exposure and eating patterns are out of sync with that circadian clock, it affects things like your cortisol levels, like hunger hormones, like how easily your body keeps blood sugars stable, even reproductive hormones and mood and energy just to name a few things. So this is the thing that most people never even look at, or it's, I don't think I've ever even seen people talk about it on here, even though it is foundational to regulating your hormones, to losing weight, to overall health and well-being. Okay, so to back this up and to dig a little bit deeper, let's actually break down a few key findings from the research and in simple terms. So first one being, your body processes food better earlier in the day. And this is not any diet culture thing, it's just simply physiology. A controlled human study in PNAS looked at people eating and sleeping on a schedule that was deliberately shifted off their internal clock or out of sync with their internal body clock. And as a result of this, their bodies became worse at keeping blood sugar in a healthy range even when they slept the same number of hours. So what this essentially means is they were looking at the same person eating the same food, the same amount of calories, just different timing. And as a result, they had very different biological responses and worsened outcomes with that. So that's just one example. 
But we've also th seen that eating late increases hunger and reduces calorie burn. So a 2022 randomized trial in cell metabolism compared overweight and obese adults' responses under two different conditions. So one of those being, you know, eating main meals earlier in the day versus eating the exact same meals, but later in the day. So they had the same meals again, same amount of calories, same timing of sleep. But the only difference being that meals were eaten earlier in the day versus eaten later. And the results found that when participants ate later in the day, they felt hungrier, they burned fewer calories and switched into a more store energy kind of a mode. And this is not the whole, you know, late night eating makes you fat. It's late eating changes your hormones or your hormone signaling in a way that can make fat loss harder and make hunger louder too. And they also tested and looked at the levels of leptin and, and ghrelin, you know, the fullness and hunger hormones during the evening in, the, in both groups. And in the group that was eating later, these were significantly impaired. So leptin, the thing that tells you when you're full, decreased and ghrelin the thing that tells you when you're hungry increase okay so we know so far eating out of sync with your circadian rhythm can negatively impact how your blood sugars respond we know that eating later at night also negatively impacts your hormones ability to lose weight and satiety levels appetite all the things and the next one i want to mention is that irregular sleep times affect hormones more than short sleep alone so reviews in nature reviews endocrinology and cardiometabolic research show that you know irregular sleep and wake times and irregular light exposure and irregular eating patterns all three of those are linked with higher glucose levels disrupted appetite hormones or regulation of these hormones higher risk of weight gain and obesity worse mood regulation and higher long-term risk of diabetes and other heart diseases too. And again, it's that mixed noisy signaling that results from all these irregular things. Your body clock is saying, you know, it's nighttime, we should be resting now, but you're eating or you're scrolling TikTok and you're blasting blue light into your eyes. Over time, the system gets confused. Our system gets confused by that. And our hormones go out of whack as a result. Okay, so this next point, it's, it's often the nuance missing from most hormone and fasting conversations, or at least it's becoming a little bit more generic nowadays, but still not talked about enough. And the research shows that women's circadian rhythms, they tend to run earlier than men's. So things like melatonin release and, you know, body temperature, they peak a bit sooner than in men. So women, on average, they seem to be more sensitive to sleep loss and circadian disruption as well. And they show bigger changes in mood and in cognition and in hormones and sometimes metabolic markers as well when sleep or meal timing is irregular. And then, of course, the menstrual cycle adds a whole extra hormonal shift lay or multiple hormonal shifts layered on top of that. So when a female body experiences skipped meals or late night eating or disrupted sleep or inconsistent sleep and waking times, even heavy caffeine intake, especially if it's replacing food, she tends to feel the effects faster and more intensely than a man doing the same things would. And this is actually why many women struggle when they copy, you know, male biohacker routines, because it's not necessarily designed for them. So it's really actually not that surprising that so many women feel like their hormones are broken or are out of whack based on everything that I've shared in this. And you don't need some rigid military schedule but you do want some kind of rhythm and consistent pattern. And even if you start with one or two things and build on it from there. So first one being keep your sleep and wake times roughly consistent as best as you possibly can. So aim for roughly the same wake up time every day, give or take, you know, 30 minutes. And also aim for roughly the same bedtime. Again, give or take 30 minutes. Irregular sleep and wake times are actually more strongly linked to metabolic and cardiovascular risk than people realize. You know, everyone's focused on how many hours you get, but regular sleep and wake times matters just as much and actually a little bit more. Now, like I said before, we're not chasing perfection here. Just not 10 p.m. one night and 2 a.m. the next over and over. So the next thing is give your body a clear morning signal. So ideally within the first hour of waking, if it has to be the first one to two hours, still better than nothing. So where possible, get some light and ideally daylight outside. Five to 10 minutes even will help. Have some actual food in the morning too, especially protein, not just coffee. The amount of people that wake up and have a coffee first of all and skip food blows my mind. This helps cortisol follow a more normal pattern. 
and it supports better energy and hunger cues later in the day as well. So have proper food in the morning. Now, if you enjoy a gentle fasting window, if you're one of those and you want to fast and you feel good on it, you don't necessarily have to ditch it. But if you're a woman who experiences anxiety and has poor sleep and cycle changes or worsened PMS symptoms and you're skipping food until lunchtime while living on caffeine, I'd honestly say it's worth experimenting with a slightly earlier protein rich first meal if you can. Okay, so number three, don't save most of your calories for 9 p.m. Stop backloading all of your calories at night and I am kind of guilty of this before too. Not intentionally, I just found that I wasn't so hungry in the morning and then I'd always want more at night and I'd almost plan it that way too to have bigger meals in the evening. But don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> and you also, you know, it's not about fearing eating after 6 p.m. for example, but we do have growing evidence that pushing most of your energy intake or caloric intake into the night or the evening is not ideal for a number of reasons, including blood sugar regulation or insulin re regulation. Insulin isn't as sensitive later in the day and also hunger and weight regulation too. So try to eat the majority of your calories earlier in the day and have a slightly smaller dinner if you're used to that being your biggest meal. I would also aim to finish your last main meal two to three hours before bed most nights. And if you're truly hungry later on in the evening, then just have something that's like a small balanced snack. That's fine to have. Just don't make 70% of your intake happen at 10 p.m. in front of the TV. Okay, I see you. Next thing is protect the wind down window in the hour or two before bed. So wherever possible, dim the lights where you can or turn the lights off or use red lights instead. Reduce intense screen time or use tools that at least reduce the brightness on them. Or, you know, you can use filters nowadays anyway. Avoid big sugar and caffeine intake right before sleep or caffeine a lot longer before sleep, depending on your genetics. But basically, you're wanting to say to your body or signal to your body that, you know, hey, it's nighttime now. You can start shifting into that relax and repair mode. And again, none of that has to be perfect straight away, but consistency beats perfection here. You don't want to just do it for a couple of nights and then, you know, not do it or do it here and there because that's not going to make a difference long term. You need to be consistent with it. So here is the reframe that I want to leave you with. Your hormones, they are not random villains out to get you. A lot of the time, they're just reacting to the rhythm that you're giving them. And if that rhythm is chaotic sleep and chaotic meals and no clear day and night signals, then guess what? Your hormones are going to feel chaotic as well. But if the rhythm is fairly consistent sleep and wake times and a clear morning signal with light and healthy balanced food or meals, most of your energy earlier in the day, not all at night, then you give your hormones a fighting chance to actually start to settle. Does this fix every hormonal issue out there? No, of course not. Things like PCOS and endometriosis and thyroid disease, perimenopause, you know, they're real and they're complex issues and not just one thing's going to fix that. But even in those conditions, supporting your circadian rhythm is one of the lowest risk highest upside levers that you can pull. So if you want me to make a full breakdown on how fasting and meal timing affects women differently compared to men, then comment fasting video below this and I will bump that up the list. I'm not sure if that's what people want to know or not. So putting that out there, let me know in the comments and also let me know, you know, what's the one rhythm shift that you're going to try this week because we know accountability is what helps people stick to things. So be accountable, put it in the comments below. Is it light in the morning? earlier meals, regular wake up times, let me know below, okay? I'm gonna be holding you to it. I wanna have updates too in a couple of weeks. All right, so if this opened your eyes at all, if you found it helpful in any way, then please remember to subscribe and like the video and share it with anyone that you think may benefit from it. And don't forget to turn the notification bell on because I share new videos weekly. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.